So Rocky and I go around the world studying how companies are being built, and today that means using cloud computing. Well, if you are using cloud computing, whether it's on GoGrid, a competitor of Rackspace, or Amazon, or Rackspace Cloud, how do you keep track of all those servers? And uh, how do you know how much you're, char you're being charged for? And how do you know if uh, any of them are even being used? You know, why not close some down if they're not being used? So Skydera has an answer to all that and much more. And it's going to be an interesting conversation for company builders right now. Who are you? Um, so my name is Lee Cole, Cole, founder and CEO of Skydera. Um, I've uh, been working on this for, for a while. Um, spent some time in the LBS space. Spent, I just got out of corporate. So I spent some time in the LBS space working on uh, specifically traffic data. And um, over my career at Tally Atlas, we built the traffic management system for all of North America. So when we provide, uh, so when you hear traffic on the radio or see uh, the speed maps on the news or any connected device that has traffic on it, those are projects that, that we had built at Tally Atlas. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, I use uh, traffic data all the time from yeah, Tell Atlas. So. We've been building those since uh, I built uh, one of the first prototypes for traffic on a phone in, in 2000 time frame. And um, we have built uh, the dynamic routing and things like that. And so um, we built all the management system for reporting the traffic and getting the traffic out to all the television and radio stations. We also did the merge between the map data for Tell Atlas and NapTech and the traffic data. Very which cool. enables like all of the cool LBS stuff that's going on today. So this leads into Skydera. You're building now the traffic data for the cloud, right? Pretty much. So when you get into like processing all that traffic in real time for all the nation, you do a lot of system management. And it wasn't like it was today where cloud is very, very scalable. So we built a lot of system management software. And so uh, about, about two and a half, three years ago, um, I wanted to build like a fun project. And so I was looking at building a Facebook app. I spent some time um, looking around, it was about four years ago, I spent some time looking around uh, what was available in kind of um, building um, in the cloud. Yeah. And so I started out by starting to build my Facebook app, but then there was, I looked for system management uh, tools, and really wasn't that many on the market that were uh, cost competitive for a side project. It wasn't really good to spend between 500 and 2,000 bucks a month for a small side project. So I started building a little small tool to help work on uh, managing the systems. And then about three or four months after, I got something that was pretty workable. And I started working on my Facebook app. And then uh, when I started working on the Facebook app, I said, you know, I'm looking at the two projects. The, the system management project was more interesting than the Facebook app project was. So then I started working on Skydare, and that's kind of how it was born. Yeah. yeah. Why, uh, tell me a little bit about why we need uh, Skydare, because you know, when you hear about the cloud, it's supposed to solve all, yeah. all your problems. <laughs> yes. You know, I mean, at Rackspace, we give you even an iPad app so you can start it's servers. It's supposed to be magical, and right? And everything's supposed to just work. Yeah. Um, and it, it's really interesting. So nowadays, um, the cloud just allows for just explosive growth. And you see companies now just going from one server to 10,000 servers. It almost seems overnight. Yeah. And so when that happens, we don't have the blinking lights anymore in the data center um, and whether or not servers are on or not. And so. Uh, there's a lot of things that, that can happen, like VM sprawl or access or those type of things. So let's say that uh, you want it to, to have your service, and all of a sudden you get this huge spike and you start up 300 servers. And so now the spike is gone, and now those 300 servers are, are not being utilized. And so now you're spending a lot of money for, not, uh, for, for servers you don't really need. Yeah. And so the, the cloud gives us a lot of uh, flexibility and, and a lot of utility. So we don't have to go out and buy servers from Dell's, rack them up, and get them ready. We just click of a button, server start up. But the fact that we have a click of a button and server start up, that's also a, a bad thing because the fact that we can have these servers start up and then forget about them. Yeah. And then you just it just it's very it's it's a cost saving issue. So uh, who is this for? What kind of is this for a small startup like two guys at Dogpatch Labs like Instagram was t two years ago, or is this for? A big company like a Procter and Gamble, or it's a, for a small and medium-sized enterprise. Okay. And I say small and medium-sized enterprise, including startups, okay. because startups eventually succeed and, and will become big companies. That's what yeah. we're hoping. And we, we want to start with them when they're very small yeah. and grow with them over time. And so, for the startup, it's just a matter of getting visualization into what's actually happening in, in your infrastructure. 
So see what's actually going on, what is utilization over time, how much is it costing you? Yep. And then for larger companies, it gets into a situation like chargeback. Because if you're a large company and you have 70 engineers over 10 departments, how do you figure out who's using what, especially if you want to use the public cloud? And let's say that you, know, let's say that you have 50 engineers, do you give them all uh, Rackspace accounts? Yep. Each one, and then have to figure out how to deal with all that in the back end? Or do you give them access to a tool, and then, that's the, then their usage is tracked over time, and then that can then be charged back to the different departments? Got it. There's a lot of ways to look at Skydera. I mean, one way, uh, you know, when I go to Flipboard, for instance, mm -hmm. or some of these cool startups in yeah. San Francisco or Silicon Valley, they often have a wall of LED, LCD yes. monitors that have little charts that are showing, you know, their 50 servers and yeah. how good yeah. they are and whether they're up and whether customers are happy, all that fun stuff. Is that is that part of what Skydera does? That is part of what, it, what we do. We have two things. We have the uh, dashboard to see what cost you have. So you can see exactly how much, how many uh, servers you're using per hour, how it breaks down per user, how it breaks down per department, and then see if you're utilizing all of your like reserve instances. And then you can see how it breaks down graphically uh, over all your users. We're also doing something that is like a uh, overall dashboard, so you can yeah. see what's actually the health of your your infrastructure as a whole over time. And then we're we're in the process of developing this kind of like hotspot uh, indicator which you can see all of your servers in, in a row, and if something happens with one, it turns red, you click that, and then you can kind of drill in. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of was the dashboard, yeah. the, I call them data porn walls. You know, exactly. When you look at the wall, exactly. you can tell everything about your company and how, how it's doing. The yeah. first part that you mentioned was more like a mint, you know, where you can see like a chart of how much, thing, how much your, yeah. uh, your kind of cloud broken computing down. bill is, is being done, right? Yeah, exactly. Can kind you of compare like Amazon and GoGrid and Rackspace Cloud on that tool? Can you see? Yes. You, you can see how, you can do a couple of things. You can see how much it costs you um, for, for the different cloud vendors before you start up your uh, infrastructure. Okay. And you can also see how much your spend is in a different, if you do multi cloud. Yeah. Or if you do multi region, you can see how much your spend is in each region or how much your spend is in each cloud. So you can see, okay, I'm spending X number of dollars in Amazon, Y number of dollars in, in Rackspace or I'm spending X number of dollars in Rackspace East and Y number of dollars in Rackspace West. Got it. And maybe I want to I wanna work on my disaster recovery uh, implementation because I, I'm, I'm heavily on the East and not on the West and I want to kind of distribute my systems between them. Yeah, yeah our, our data center last week was hit by tornadoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. You, you always got to plan for weird stuff happening to one data center and make sure you're backed up on... Uh, on multiple on, data centers, yeah. yeah. And that's one of the things that we, we find is uh, a good utilization for the tool is how do you do capacity planning and uh, HADR um, because you know ultimately the systems are going to go down. Yeah. VMs have a nasty habit of just disappearing. Yeah. And even though the cloud has gotten a lot stronger and a lot better, there's still that, you don't have a physical hardware there, so it's still that opportunity that you know, your infrastructure can go down and you can have issues. Yeah, and the third part of you is uh, almost like an architectural assistance tool or a, a way to, to build instances and use this new thing called Clef, right? Uh, chef, or chef, chef, I'm sorry, <laughs> Chef, which yes. lets you uh, start up the, a lot of servers r really mm -hmm. fast and manage them. Yes. You know. So we're kind of looking. About that. Yeah, so we're kind of looking at how um, how do we get more uh, deeper into the development process and help um, bring um, developers into the system management. So like the DevOps yeah. into the system management. And so we had a legacy uh, script running engine that would run Python, Ruby, and Bash scripts, and that was interesting. And 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 that helps with the historical IT uh, guys that have a have a library of scripts that they want to continue to use. And then we're looking at how do we handle kind of the next phase of that same type of, of a paradigm, which is you know, Chef and Puppet. Yep. And this allows for kind of mass system automation. This, this is our automation portion of yep. it. So, so mass system automation. And so what, we, um, what we've done is we've been working, well, first we looked at kind of what is the biggest library of uh, kind of scripts that we can, we can get. And we looked at both Puppet and Chef. And they're both very, very interesting. And we're looking at the, the, the kind of veracity of the communities. Yep. And so we started with Chef. And what that allows us to do is to get a large library of over about 350, almost 400, 400 uh, recipes, what they call them, yep. um, that we can, we can now give to our users that they can do all kind of systems automation things. Like set up a Hadoop cluster kind yeah, of Yeah, like set up Hadoop cluster, set up a, uh, a, a LAMP stack, or set up a Python stack, or set up a Django stack. 
um, there's many different things. And since it's community led and community supported, um, we, um, you know, we can contribute to this community by building custom ones as well. Yeah. And then we can also use the custom ones that, that are uh, being done by the community. So there's tons and tons of things like setting up a Cassandra, set up a Cassandra cluster, setting up a Hadoop cluster, monitoring, and, and there's anything you can think of in systems uh, administration is kind of in there. Yeah, it's really cool. How, yeah. how do you pay for this tool? How much, how much is it? And what, so what sure, so, so software as a service. Yep. Um, well, we got two ways. Um, we don't want to bind our larger customers by relying on a software as a service. Yeah. Um, a lot of them want to have like traditional install uh, software. So we do provide a hardware appliance um, for the larger customers. But for the majority of our customers, like 95% of our customers, we have a software as a service, which ranges between uh, 199 and 499 for the low end, and then up to 5,000 for the high end. Very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and how, uh, tell me a little bit about the fundamentals behind your test, behind your business. How are you funded, for instance? Uh, so we've, uh, we have a, we've been uh, seed investment. We have uh, two investors. We've raised about a half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. We're in the process of raising a more Series A now. Yeah. Um, so um, we have uh, a European investor, the Super Angel of Europe, and then Quest Software as our, as our seed investors. Very cool. Mm -hmm. T take me around the UI and, and uh, sure. it, you know those three three or three pieces, right? You know the mint, yeah. The the uh, um, the data porn wall, the, the graphs, and then the the, the chef. You sure. Know, it, it t take me around each of those and mm -hmm. tell me what I would see on my screen and what I'd be able to do with it. Sure. So we start out with uh, our, the main dashboard. So this gives you counts across all of your infrastructure. Um, we have about seven that are standard, and we can create custom ones. So we can count how many, uh, how many instances you, ha you have running, how many IP addresses you have allocated, uh, how many resources you have, and then health. Um, we have both health for Amazon and Rackspace. Um, and it's done on a, on a, a minutely basis. Yep. And then um, we have also um, on the uh, right-hand side navigation for the whole entire site, which we have for the cloud control section, which gives you all of the overall cloud administration, so administration for um, starting up instances, getting information about images, um, launching and administrating over the instances. And then um, we have our analysis, analysis section we call actually cloud intelligence. Yep. And what that allows you to do is have uh, business intelligence kind of in the cloud age. Um, so you can see uh, exactly how many servers you have running, uh, how much they cost you per hour, how it breaks down per instance size, no matter which cloud it actually is in, public or private. Um, and then if you wanted to look at uh, how much uh, each department, so if you're a large organization, you can break it down by department. So you can say uh, uh, corporate IT is spending X number of dollars, um, uh, US or, uh, East Coast IT is using Y number of dollars, West Coast IT is using Z number of dollars. And then you can also look at how it breaks down per user, so you can see who's the most active user in your system. And so you can do things like chargeback, which, which becomes very, very powerful for large organizations. Because now it's not, a, uh, it's not an idea of, OK, how much are we actually spending? So the CIO or the CFO can see exactly, at any given time, exactly how much they're spending um, and how much they've spent month over month. So they can see if it's an uptrend or downtrend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of data there that you can use to run your business. Yes, so. it's a lot of data. Mm -hmm. You can uh, also um, uh, give people access to your system without giving them uh, passwords to the servers, right? So under our security section, what, it, what we allow them to do is, is instead of um, giving out um, uh, SSH keys to all of your developers and having to manage that key process, yep. which can be kind of complicated. Let's say if you have a contractor who's working on a very limited um, amount of time on your system, you really don't want to give them the SSH keys to your production servers, then do their job, and then try to take them back. Because once they're out, they're always out forever. Yep. So we actually have uh, a security system that allows you to say, OK, I want to give you a, it's a role, we have a role-based system. So I'm going to give you a contractor role within my system, and it gives you access to these pieces of the application. So it actually um, modifies the user interface based on which role you have. And Very so you cool. can say, as a contractor, they have access to SSH into these machines, or they have uh, the ability to look at this financial information, or they have the ability to look at this statistical information about a particular machine. Very cool. And then once once you give them access, they can log in, and then they can actually SSH directly in from the server without having to do any setup. Now, because you give uh, uh, visibility to Rackspace and Amazon mm -hmm. and GoGrid and, and are there others? I think those were the main three. Yeah. Can 
I use your tool to move data from one system to another or to clone it so that I'm... Um, Cloning, yes. Okay. Um, we're not in the process. We're, we're not, haven't done moving yet. Like um, uh, VMware calls it live migration. Yeah. So we don't have the live migration um, type of functionality yet. That, that's a little bit more than what our users are, are used to. Yeah. But you can definitely take a system that you have running on Rackspace and clone that system on another cloud vendor. Okay. And what, what in essence happened is we would use the same exact um, base AMI. We have matchups between uh, 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 one cloud vendor and another cloud vendor. Very and then, cool. what, then that allows you to say, okay, I have this running, um, and this is where our automation comes into play. I have this running on, on Rackspace, and I want to have um, a w one that looks exactly the same, but not on Rackspace East, but on Rackspace West. Yeah. Or I want to have one that looks exactly the same on Amazon East. Now this is going to be interesting with OpenStack because um, we're we're moving our Rackspace cloud to OpenStack, and now you mm -hmm. can run OpenStack instances in your own data center. Yes. In your you know and and can you we now fully support add that? We fully support uh, OpenStack. Okay. Yes, we fully so you support. can actually watch your own internal OpenStack yes. servers as well. Yes. Oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to run your own internal OpenStack servers, and you can still see um, the overall usage of all of your cloud cloud resources. Very cool. Yeah. Sounds like a fun business. It is. It's been fun. I've been working on it for about two and a half years so far. Yeah. yeah. And uh, thanks for coming out and, sh and talking to me about it and showing it to me. Yeah. Where can people learn more about it and what kinds of resources do you have up on your website for people to They can find it on our website. Um, we're actually in the process of doing a new, um, a new uh, marketing website now. So there will be more information, but they can find basic information now at uh, skydera.com. Mm -hmm. They can follow me on Twitter or, uh, at Lee Cole uh, or at Skydera. Mm -hmm. I tweet under both. Very cool. <laughs> Um, and then also feel free to email me, leecole at skydera.com. Very cool. And I'm Th open to answer any questions. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, thank you awesome. for having me. And thanks yeah. for helping our customers with their uh, cloud infrastructure because it's a big deal. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm.